All right, today we're going to talk about the GAL 4 UAS system. So let's do that. So this is a system in mostly used in fruit flies. Okay. And what this is, is a on off regulation system for Drosophila transgenic gene expression. So if we want to express a transgene in Drosophila in a targeted or tissue specific way, we're going to go with the GAL4 UAS system most of the time. And I like this system because what you can do with it is incredibly targeted and flexible. And I have a lot of experience with it. I cut my chops with the GAL4 UAS system in Drosophila. So I like to talk about it. Just for the history of it, just a quick show. Um, it's based off two papers, a cell paper. So here's the cell paper. Senior author is Mark Tashney, who's at Harvard, I think, if I pronounce his name right. GAL4 activates gene expression in mammalian cells. So they're, so they're first looking at this as a transgenic regulatory system in mammalian cells. And then there was a follow-up nature paper, and these are both in 1988. GAL4 activates transcription in Drosophila. And this is super popular in Drosophila systems. Okay, so what is it? Uh, the first thing about it is it's a bipartite system. That means there's two components. Okay. And let's talk about each of these indiv individual components. The first component is the GAL4. So GAL4 is a protein, obviously. It's a transcription factor. And if we remember transcription factors, transcription factors will find regions of DNA to bind to, okay? And they regulate gene expression. So they're often binding right around promoter regions or enhancer regions, and they're controlling whether or not a gene is on or off. And by that, I mean whether or not it's being transcribed. Okay, so the GAL4 protein is actually, it's a gene from yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And it its native function in yeast is that it controls galactose metabolism transcription factors. It is, it's essentially like a controller of other controllers in galactose metabolism. But in most of these transgenic systems, um, what you want to remember about GAL4 is the status when GAL4 is bound, it's turning genes on, okay? So if GAL4 is bound to the DNA, it's usually turning genes on. Okay, so that's the first part of the bipartite system. Let's talk about the second part. Second part is called UAS, which stands for Upstream Activating Sequence. And what this is, is this is an enhancer. Okay, so this is going to help turn genes on. And the UAS is a sequence of DNA. So if, you're, if here's your transgene X, here's your ORF X. Okay, and you got your start code on here, ATG. What people will do is they will put a UAS sequence right here, right here on the five prime end of the gene. Okay, what that's able to do is that is the sequence that the GAL4 transcription factor binds to and so it turns genes on, now your ORF X, if it's bound. Okay, so now you understand sort of the two components. The first component is the GAL4 protein, which is a transcription factor that turns genes on. And the second component is the DNA sequence, the upstream activating sequence that the GAL4 protein binds to. Okay, so those are the two relevant pieces of this bipartite transgenic expression system 
in Drosophila melanogaster. So now let's talk about a typical setup, okay? So in Drosophila, let's have two flies here. Flies have red eyes, typically, if they're transgenic. Okay, so a typical transgenic system involves two flies. And let's talk about the second fly first. When you set up transgenes in Drosophila, you usually do not want them to be expressed right away. You usually want to have control of the expression of that transgene. Okay, so most of the time when you want to set up a transgenic fruit fly, you want the basal state of that transgene that you're inserting to be in off status. Okay, unless you're doing something different, something unique, and you want like a constitutive promoter, most of the time we want to have control of these things. So if you can imagine this fruit fly, okay, is transgenic. So its chromosomes have a particular insert of transgene X or X. And just like we talked about, usually the way that this is built is you will assemble a construct where you insert an upstream activating sequence, five prime of your ORF X, okay? And that's gonna control it. And the reason that it's off is because in this fly, there's no GAL4, okay? Right now, it's just a fly that has UAS upstream of your ORF X. Now let's talk about this second fly. Okay, the second or this first fly, which is a different fruit fly. Okay, now this fruit fly is also transgenic, but this one's a little bit different. This one has a tr specific transgene, which is the GAL4 ORF. Okay, and it's got a promoter, which right now I'm going to call the special promoter. Okay, so in this, in this fly, this transgene, the GAL4, is on and it's being controlled by a special promoter, which we'll talk about more later, okay? Now, the question is, how do you get your ORF X, which is the transgene you really wanna test, you're really studying this ORF X, okay? You wanna express this thing. How do you get that thing to go from the off status to an on status, okay? The way that you do that is we can mate these two flies together. So if you imagine this one is a female, this one is a male, we cross them, they mate. This is the F1 then generation. This F1 generation of fruit flies, because fruit flies are diploid, is gonna inherit both this chunk. So it's gonna have a special promoter on GAL4, and it's also going to inherit this, your UAS upstream of your transgene X, okay? Now what happens in this fruit fly? What's happening? Okay, the special promoter, I told you it was on. It's driving the GAL4. So the GAL4, the RNA polymerase is binding to this promoter and it's making transcript of the GAL4. That transcript is being translated into a protein, GAL4, okay? Now this GAL4 is being expressed in the cells of this fruit fly, okay? So then what it does is that GAL4 now comes back to the DNA and it finds its UAS sequence and it binds to it, okay? Now that, as we know, as I've said prior, it turns this transgene on, and now ORF X, your transgene, is now starting to be transcribed into RNA, and then that RNA gets translated into protein X, okay? So by combining both transcription factor right here and the transgene here in a mating process, the offspring are producing our transgene X now in a controlled fashion, okay? Now, the next part we wanna talk about is this special promoter and how we control that transgene expression and why it's special, why the GAL4 UAS bipartite system is so special. And one of the reasons it's special is it's because it's so customizable. 
Now, let me explain that. So the first component is the gal four, okay? And I said before it was controlled by this special promoter. We can change that special promoter. And when I say special promoter, this is usually a targeted promoter that's doing something very specific. It's targeting transgene expression in a very specific tissue. So one of the scenarios that I deal with a lot is we want transgenic expression in germ lines. Germ lines are like the sperm and the testes. So in a lot of my work, we are using not what looks like this, but something very close that looks like this. It's a GAL4 transgene. And we use a promoter called the Nanos promoter. And a Nanos promoter only drives transcription in testes and ovaries. Okay, it's a robust germline promoter. So now what happens, you can imagine you have your ORTH X, UAS upstream in the one fly, you got your other fly, and you make them together. Now imagine what happens, okay? We get the F1s, okay? Which are fruit flies that have both the UAS in front of our gene X, and in this case, the nanos promoter driving the GAL4. Now what happens is the GAL4 gets made in germ lines, right? Because this nanos promoter is driving the, the transcription of GAL4 only in germ lines. So only in germ line cells is the GAL4 now finding the UAS, turning that gene on, and then this gene X is being made into protein X only in germ lines. And that's all because we switched out that promoter for a nanos promoter. Okay, if you didn't catch that, I'm gonna give you another example, another really, really cool example. So imagine we have a scenario, the scenario is we want to knock out a specific neuron, so a neural cell, one single neuron that in a fruit fly controls CO2 response. So there's some neuron that somehow measures or causes a reaction to CO2, and we want to knock that neuron out. If we have a special promoter, in this case, let's call it the neuron promoter, we can devise a system to knock out that neuron, to kill that neuronal cell, and then study the fruit fly and study what happens when that cell is destroyed. Okay, so let me show you how this works. If we have that neuron promoter, we stick it upstream of our GAL4, right? This is our one fly, fly one. And then in the second fly, we put a UAS transgene in front of a killing toxin, okay? And this is our fly two. Now we mate these. We produce our F1, which inherits both the UAS toxin and the neuron promoter GAL4. Now what happens? GAL4 in the neurons gets transcribed and made into protein. That GAL4 in the neurons, in that single neuron, is able to bind to its UAS sequence and it turns on transcription of this toxin gene, which then gets made into a toxin protein. This is my skull and crossbones. Which then kills the neuron, okay? So do you see like how unique and customizable the system is? We can use this to delete single cells. We can use this to control 
targeted specific transgene expression in specific tissues. We could, you could imagine we might want to express a gene in the midgut. We might want to express a gene during a certain time of development, like the larval stage or the adult stage or the pupil stage or early development. All that can be controlled by changing the special promoter in front of the GAL4. And now the system is so robust and so utilized in the Drosophila community that we literally have thousands of Drosophila that have a GAL4 insertion with a special promoter. So you can imagine one, two, three, four, all the way down to N. We have a million different variants, not a million, but we have a bunch of different variants of GAL4 transgenes with different promoters. And these different promoters then can now be combined with whatever transgene you want to express in the fruit fly and can express that transgene in a tissue specific or timing specific matter, all dependent on the status of those promoters. That is the Drosophila GAL4 UAS system.